Welcome to Motley Muse. I'm Yvette Stoffer and I painted this awesome, beautiful painting. I went into a lot of detail and I explained a lot of different things on how to do this and I used a lot of different paintings that I painted to help explain ideas and concepts and techniques. I hope that your space painting turns out super, super awesome and I know it's going to turn out awesome. You're a good painter. And thanks for painting with me and patronizing my business and coming along with me on this journey. I greatly, truly appreciate it. Let's have some fun. This is going to be so much fun. I love painting space. These are many different paintings that I've done of space. There's lots of cool ideas, very simple, very basic different types and ways to do the moons and the stars. It's a whole bunch of different types of techniques on how to do it. This one, I chose a green background, this one a purple background, this one a blue, and then this was a mixture. So in the end of the day, your painting is gonna reflect the colors that you use, and that's how your space is gonna look. So I know it's very common sense and everything, but if we keep those things in the color palette in mind when we're painting space, oftentimes in the end we will achieve a more desirable look that we're going for. I personally like the color purple. However, with this one, I feel that maybe it could have been too much. Over here is a good mixture of purples with blues, and this one's very basic. This one over here is a good one. This is just using blues and whites. And then these two right here are a good example of having black as an undertone. That I started with black, I went with a little bit of purple, and then I followed up with some turquoise. I find that turquoise, when painting space, oftentimes tends to be a really good idea and work out really well to get those colors in there, the infrared colors. And oftentimes I've noticed that doing black with the shadows really seems to make the space behind it pop really good and still be in the mindset that it's nighttime and it's evening. And if you notice within these different paintings, I've done some bright areas followed next to some dark areas and then some more bright areas along the way. I feel that when you look up in the sky, you see that. You see some darker areas, some not so dark areas, and a lot of that has to do with the atmosphere and the pollution that's in the air or the lack of pollution. It really does kind of switch our focus and change it a little bit. So keeping that in mind and water vapors really seem to give us some far away look and some closer looks. So it really, it's just, you know, just play and have fun. In each one of these paintings that I painted, I didn't really stress and put a lot of effort and energy fretting. Mostly the reason why they came out good is because I just let it go and just let it be what it is. So when you're painting, I want you to keep that in mind and calm your monkey mind and just let it be and relax and stop thinking about the stresses of the day and the things you have to do. Just give yourself a moment of peace and tranquility where you can just sit down and focus on what you're painting. And oftentimes when I do this for myself, I notice that my paintings end up being a lot cooler. Like this Aurora Borealis was totally fun. I had a really easy time doing this because I was totally in the moment. I'm going to show you how to do this. These little guys are just dragons. So, you know, if you wanted to do a bird or something or a plane maybe a spaceship or something. It's very easy, fun ideas. And I want you to see the moon here. I really like this painting because of the moon. Notice how it's shaded around this area and it's lighter around here. When I did the moon, I was thinking about how the light bounces off of a round object. I know it seems really simple and it seems basic when we learned all this stuff in first grade, but really trust me, if you have the opportunity to be in a dark room and play with light and to just take a moment and absorb the way that light is bouncing off objects, especially spheres, your moons are going to be way better. 
I did it again over here behind them. I did some darks and then I did some grays followed by some light. Now with the image that is standing, the uh, Sally is standing in front of the moon, I added a little bit of a white line. Now the only reason why I did that is because she was in black. And so by doing a little bit of a lighter area, even though it is dark here, it still lets her stand out just a little bit. So that really helps out a lot. Okay, so let's get started here. I'm going to go ahead and move these over so I don't get any of my paint all over my pretty, uh, pretty paintings. Also, I love painting in many different size canvases. And I always like to go for canvases that are their wood wrapped over a wood, uh, uh, a canvas wrapped over a wood frame. I just, I don't know, I feel like those canvases are pretty cool, a little more 3D. So the first thing I'm going to start off with is I got all my stuff set up and ready to go so I don't have to stress out about it, which I recommend you do the same thing so that way if you have paint on your hand you won't get it all over your stuff. This is the canvas I'm going to be working with. Is This one is 10 inches by 10 inches. And I'm going to show you the easy way to open this. This is covered in a plastic, which is totally cool. And I prefer to get them like this when they're covered because then it just keeps the canvas white and pretty and not messed up. The problem is, is opening it. Now you can be over here all day fussing and fussing and every, and it's annoying. But to make it easier on yourself, go ahead and take your paintbrush, any paintbrush will do, Flip it over upside down and take a corner, pop a hole, pull it through all the way to the other corner, and then pull it to the other corner as well. Now that's going to open up the plastic and make it easy for you, and then you can just peel the rest of it off. Now by doing it this way, I am minimizing the chances in which I'm going to poke a hole right through my canvas. When I was first starting out painting, I would always try to just like this and that and everything and holes would oftentimes get poked and you know it's kind of not cool. It's a waste of money, waste of materials to poke holes. Also with your canvas I recommend never ever press down and put like heavy weights on it. Like if I had this I don't want to just put it there because it's going to stretch out my canvas and poke holes and dent it and and it's just going to be horrible. Now over time, if you do have these canvases in um, a wet area such as a bathroom, you can get some mold and whatnot that will appear in here. And then the, this wood, because it is pine, it will warp. So that's something to keep uh, to think about uh, with placement. But other than that, we're ready to go. Okay, so I have my canvas prepped and ready. Now the first thing that I would prefer to do with my painting is that I would like my, I would like to do the background first and then work my way into the foreground. So I got this little guy at the dollar store, the dollar store sponge. There are many different artist type sponges and everything, but this one is very, very super cost effective. Just a normal car sponge. Now, when you use a sponge, because it has lots of edges on it, these edges can like show up as lines on your painting. And you really don't want that because then it's, I mean, you could want the line, but I prefer not to and to go without. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut my sponge with a really good quality scissors. Just get a chunk of it. I'm going to save this so it doesn't get ruined and I can have it for other future paintings. Now I have this little guy. Because I'm going to work with different colors, I'm going to go ahead and divide this sponge because it's big. This is a huge sponge. I don't need this. And remember those lines right here, you know, if I'm pad if I have this line and this line and I'm padding down, I'm going to have those lines happening. So, I'm going to go ahead and make this guy just a little bit smaller. Now, the bigger your canvas is, the bigger I uh, sponge I recommend you using. 
Um, otherwise, it's just going to take you a million years to be able to paint everything. So this is good, I think. I mean, I could go a tad bit on the smaller side. So we're going to go ahead and cut this guy in half. And that should be, yeah, that's a good size. I'm going to keep... There we go. And let's see, we'll get rid of this one. This is a good size sponge. I like it. Yep. Okay, so I have my sponges. I'm going to put them off to the side. I don't really need them at the moment. Now I'm going to get my palette. I recommend using a plate. I think using a plate is a lot easier. You can throw this thing away. Um, I am painting with acrylics today. So because of that, I really don't feel like I need a glass palette. They're wonderful and great for oils, but for acrylic, that it doesn't really seem to work out a whole lot well. I mean, it's just a lot of cleaning and a lot of hassle. And also, when you're cleaning your palettes and your brushes, make sure that you are disposing of your wastewater correctly because the uh, paint has a lot of corrosive issue materials in it and stuff that are going to break down the pipes and clog the pipes and... Even though I know you're dumping out your water of the brush and it looks all liquid, it's just over the years that like it grows and it builds up. So sometimes in the summertime, I like to just take my, uh, the water that I am, like the stuff that I have, like if I'm doing a paint palette, I'll clean it out and everything in like a bucket and then that waste water, I will go and dump it on some weeds in the garden. And that usually is that's a pretty good idea for that. Um, anyway, so we're gonna use our palette. Now, I am going to, since this is one painting, I'm just kind of going to show you all the different techniques within this one painting, so it's going to be a, like a really cool painting. It is small, so I have to think about spacing. But I am going to start with a black background. I am going to go with my paint, and I'm going to add a little bit of black to my palette, just a little. Black goes a long way. You really don't need, like, for example, this little guy here, of paint has lasted me uh, about a year, really, honestly, because that's really all the paint I ever really need in a painting for black, it goes so far. Now, I'm gonna go ahead, put that off to the side. I'm gonna make sure I'm still in the view of the camera. Yep, you can see me just fine. Okay, so I got my sponge. I know, I'm taking advantage that it had a curvy spot of the sponge. So I'm going to take advantage of that curviness. And I'm going to put my thumbs here and push it in on itself. Do you see that? Doing this little motion and trying to create it and hold it. So I'm pushing it in and then I'm pushing with my thumb and my fingers. And I'm making this so it's super round. That's exactly what I want. No edges whatsoever. I'm going to go ahead and dip a little bit into my black and then come over to the side and wipe some of it off. I mean, not really wipe some, but press some. I want paint on my sponge, but then I want to press some of it off here. I want to get a nice thick coating that's not too much. And by doing that, I'm going to get little holes in here. And that's really why I use a sponge because I want all those little microscopic little holes there. And what that's going to do is be awesome. Do you see how it's sparing? There are some areas where it's really thick, but then other areas where you can still see some white back there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to stamp everywhere. Stamp, stamp, stamp. I'm going to take my time and I'm not going to press too much. Now I do have a technique that can make things a little bit easier on yourself. I just so happened that I have this really tiny little book that is kind of a little bit thick. And so what I like to do is put this book underneath and it gives me support. So that way I'm not pushing too hard. You don't want to push too hard on your canvas. Otherwise, you're going to be like poking holes and destroying it and stretching it. And I don't want to do that. So I'm going over here and taking my time. And if you need to move it around so that way you can make sure that your book stays underneath, go ahead and do that. This is good, I don't wanna to do too much. And you notice how I've hardly, I haven't gone back to the paint yet. I'm still working it, still working it. And notice each time I'm stamping, they're getting lighter and lighter. 
This is exactly what I want. Little areas with just a little bit. Now I am going to go back and stamp some more paint just a little bit. Just how I did with uh, earlier. Put some paint on it and then go over here and dab it off and move it around. Make sure it's a good thick coating but not too thick so I can still get those bubbles that are in between the dark areas there. And I'm going to go ahead and do the side. I am, um, oops, it's too thick. So since it's too thick, I'm going to just let it go and then I'm going to come over here and do some more and it'll get lighter as I go. Because if I had a lot of paint and I keep working and working and working it, it's just going to be a big black area and I kind of don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp some stuff in. Go, I could go over it a couple times. The more you go over it, the less of those holes, you're going to start losing the little holes that are in between the pigment. Okay, so this is pretty good. I like it. It's working. Put some, you know, randomness. I'm turning my sponge every so often. Rotate your sponge so you get different little looks and shapes. I mean, you still get round, but notice how as I turned it, like, it was dark on that side, dark on that side, dark on this side. Like all the dark areas are kind of different. That's really what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and call it a day with this guy. So I'm going to set him aside for a quick moment. And I feel that it is a good time to dry the painting because if we go in with our next colors, what's going to happen is they're going to start blending on the canvas. And that's not really a look that I'm trying to achieve at the moment. I don't want any blending at all. So that way I can have high pigmenty colors that are very sharp and not dull. So I'm going to go ahead and dry my painting for just a second. Okay, so from here we're going to add on more color. Now, if I wanted to add clouds, like in this painting, you see how there's clouds, it's a little bit lighter, like the sun would be, like the sun is over this way because I have the shadow, the highlights of the mountains, but I would have the white and the clouds. Now, I'm going to try to go for a much darker space. And I want my space to be much darker. I'm really, really loving this painting. See, it's very dark and very night-night in this painting. So that's, that's more what I'm going to go for as a reference. Okay, so now I'm going to go with my palette. I'm going to make sure I'm still in the view of the camera here. There we go. Okay. So now let me go for, let's see, we can either use a turquoise. Or I would recommend a magenta. I'm really big on to using magenta over purple. I just feel that it shows up better. I'm going to go ahead and let's do a little bit of magenta. So I'm going to put some over here just on the side. Just a little. I don't need a whole lot. Magenta is um, more expensive of the colors, so be very sparing with it. Don't be putting a whole bunch of paint all over your... Your palette because I mean it's not that much more expensive but it kind of is. It's a little bit more work goes into making magenta paint. It's a little more expensive because of the additives. Okay so I'm working because with the roundness of the sponge I'm using that to my advantage and I'm going to do it again where I press my thumbs into the middle and push my fingers around and then the thumb on the bottom, the finger on the top, and what that's going to do is make this nice and round and take away the corners. I don't want any edges. So instead of being random, 
which I could. I could totally be random just in the way that I did these black spots. I can do the exact same thing with the purple. But I kind of want to show a little bit of a Milky Way that I have like a direction of there's a lot of planets and debris and a lot of things happening. I'm also going to make my Milky Way start from the right corner and go to the left. The reason for this is because Hmm. Well, as as English speakers, we read from the left to the right and then from the top going down. So when I paint, I like to have my designs going in a way that is not da 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 da. I like to make the eye have to do some work to move in counter ways that it's usually going left to right and we're really programmed in that method. So I'm going to I'm going to go from here to there, which still will bring me from left to right going up to down. But if I do it from here to there, I still have the same problem. I would, I just, I kind of want this area to be a little bit darker because I would like to do my, um, I, I do want to show you how to do one of these guys. And I feel that most people are right handed and painting these. Uh, right-handedly is a little bit easier than left-handed and I think it'll it'll work you got yeah just pick an idea when you paint and go with it I feel that if I do have the basic idea line going up nor uh, the top to the bottom and I have a movement in my painting it makes the eye move more the more the eye moves the better awesomer paintings look the more you're like you just want to sit and stare at it for a second. So I put paint. I came over here. I dabbed it to try to get some of it off. And now I'm going to just be very sparing. Very, very sparing with what I'm doing. I still do have my book underneath. So I want to keep that in mind. Don't press too hard. Do some on the sides a little bit. We'll go back and we'll see we'll kind of fill it in if you go over some of the black that's really awesome do that but don't cover up too much of the black and remember to rotate your sponge every so often so you get a varied look now I strongly recommend do not wipe when you wipe it's going to not have such a 3d looking experience remember how earlier I was talking about the atmosphere and water in the atmosphere and pollution and how it kind of distorts images a little bit if we wipe that kind of illusion sort of goes away this is an easier way to achieve that same idea i'm going to make sure that i kind of wrap it down here so it's like it's going a little bit to the side and then what i'm also going to do is add a few over in the areas over here just to be sparing and just to Okay, there's, you know, there's debris and space everywhere. But I want my main focal point of purple to be this guy. Oops, I added too much. So I'm just going to let that be. And come over here. I got too much paint on my sponge, but that's okay. I'll just have a big spot of purple. That's all right. Okay. It's coming good. I'm going to go ahead and just do a couple on this side just to get a little, little bit of variance here. I want to show that there's, there's stuff going on. Now remember, I'm leaving a lot of white space on purpose because that's where I'm going to fill in with my next color. And I just want it to be very super sparing. As sparing as you can possibly get it. You want it to look very random but then you still want to have some kind of a evenness within your randomness. A little bit of chaos, chaoticness, but yet it's a cohesive unit that just kind of works together. And it is what it is. I'm going to come down here a little bit. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm going to keep this off to the side. I do feel like I'm going to revisit my sponge probably. Gonna see how it goes. 
Now, my next color is turquoise. If you do not have turquoise, you can make turquoise by using blue and white mixed together and then adding some green in there and then just getting a nice shade. And I strongly recommend that you work with, uh, with playing with paint, mixing colors. You know, if you still, you have these, these are great. I mean, these make my life way easier uh, to just not have to mix colors and it goes way faster. Um, but if you are a new painter, I strongly recommend just taking the time to learn about paint in the sense of practice and play with it. So it would be like the idea of a athlete. They would go to practice. They would stretch every day. They would lift weights. They would do what they need to do. So that way, when it's time to play the game, they're ready. I would strongly recommend when mixing colors for you to do that and to like just take some time to take some time to uh, just practice and work with the medium and just how it goes and you know it's okay to fail and just you know if you're failing and the painting comes out hideous just think about okay well this is what went wrong let's not do that again and then try something new and keep working it and keep working it until eventually it'll happen so dip it in the paint that's too much paint on the sponge so what am I gonna do I'm gonna come to the side of my my paint I'm gonna dab it and squish it in there and, and just get it all over the place a little bit of paint. Now I've been painting space. I know my paintings come out really good, but let me tell you, I have painted, I'm going to try to follow my little, um, my milky way here, but I'm not going to cover up all my purple or black. But anyways, my, I know my paintings are cool and I still feel that I am still studying myself in the sense that every time I paint, I'm always putting my best effort and putting forward and really trying to make this happen and the more that I work with the I notice I'm getting purple in here which is causing it to blend on my canvas I really don't like that I'm going to take a quick second and dry what I got with the purple so that way I don't have blending on the canvas but I have painted space a million million times so if your painting doesn't look exactly like mine don't worry we're going to keep working we're going to add layers just like we're adding it like layers on a cake and eventually when we build it up the painting is going to be super awesome and cool you're going to love it so go ahead and take a moment and dry your painting <laughs> Now with paintings, uh, the paintings that I totally fall in love with and I really like that I paint, those paintings, I, um, I'm going to go ahead and wipe this a little bit, get that purple off my sponge. So with the paintings I really super like, I am in the mindset that I like to put a top coat. Now these, paint, these paints I'm using aren't the super expensive stuff, but at the same time they're not the really cheap stuff either. So uh, they do good where I really, I don't need to, um, to seal them, but you know, if I really like the painting, of course I'm going to take that extra step. And, uh, what I'm saying is if you do that, like the drawing that I just did was only a few seconds, that's not adequate time to really consider your painting completely cured and dried. I feel that I like to give myself 24 hours before I go and seal it and, I really touch and manipulate, move around my painting. I just let it sit on the table for a minute and uh, just, you know, to let it really cure and harden. Because there is an oil in the acrylic paint, 
it won't respond if it dries and then I go try to paint it uh, over again, I'll paint more on it, it's not going to reactivate the paint. So with oils it does, that's the difference between oils and acrylics. Oils get reactivated, but then the acrylics, no, once they're dried, that's it, there's no more. And I kind of like that in the sense that it allows me to go a little bit faster in the sense that I'm not working on a painting for like 10 months. It makes me have to commit and, okay, this is what we're doing. And uh, I really feel that I need, sometimes I need that little extra push. Also, when it comes to paintings, I like to paint and try to get the painting I'm doing. I mean, this is a small canvas. I try to get it all done in like one sitting because I notice with my personality, if I don't, what happens is later I'm going to have issues and I'm going to be like, oh, and I'm never going to get it done. So that's kind of a thing that I recommend doing, you know, trying to, if you're going to do it, commit and get it done. And, you know, there are paintings that I paint sometimes that I'm like, oh, it's not working out. And I just don't like it. But you know what I do? I keep with it. And then I at least, okay, I did really bad on that area. But then I did something over here that was a happy accident. And it just worked out. And everything was cool. And then I took that and I learned from it. And I was like, okay, well, this is what I did. And this is what I really liked. And I, I recommend that. So if right now you're looking at your space and you're like, what? It's, I don't get it. It's not happening. Eventually, it's going to happen. Trust me. Just keep on with it. Keep trying. Get out of your monkey mind. And don't tell yourself you suck because you don't. You're an awesome painter. And I know you can do this. It just takes some patience. So give, yourself, give yourself some love and some patience. And eventually this is going to all happen. It's going to come together and you're going to be this awesome painter because I already know you are an awesome painter. So I'm going to take a moment and dry it so that way I don't uh, mix paint on the canvas. really nicely. I'm very happy with the progress we've made. I'm going to go back and use my sponge that I had from the black. I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to be very particular and put a lot of thinking into where I put my little dots. It's very hard to cover up the black because of the tone black versus like the turquoise. Notice how the turquoise covered black but you could still see some turquoise through the black. So with this, I want to put extra little effort and just really think about where I'm putting it, rotate my sponge so that way I have lots of good little angles and that way I'm not like all do 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 and then all the do 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 do's look the same. And I'm going to more try to keep, since I am making the Milky Way here, I am going to try to keep a little bit more dark areas out of the Milky Way. It's okay to add a couple little here and there. Make sure you get the sides and the corners. And the goal for me right now is to really look for spaces that are still white and need paint on them. Yep. Oh, I'm liking it. It's coming to get happening. Ooh. 
I'm so excited to see your painting when it's done. Don't forget to share it with me, okay? I'll be all super sad if you don't share me your awesome, cool painting. I've been stuck in here because of coronavirus and I need to go to an art gallery, but all the art galleries are closed and I've already done all of the tours online, the, the virtual tours, and I want to see the art gallery of you. I want to see how cool you're painting this because I just know it's going to be awesome. I'm pretty happy with mine. I'm totally, I'm digging it. Yep. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm on vacation right now. Like, I'm on vacation to go to outer space. Yippers. Wouldn't that be cool? I mean, could it? I, I don't know. I mean, maybe in like a thousand years from now with technology. But wow. I, I'll sign me up. If we could go to space, like if we could like just go on the plane like we're going to Hawaii. And then, no, we're going to go to space. Oh, I'd be all about it. I would, as it sounds right now, though, I'm, I'm, I'm too chicken. I, I'm so frail. There, no, I couldn't. I would pee my pants the whole time, being all stressed out, and we're gonna die! So I'm not brave enough now, but oh, how fun would it be to, I, to be able to go up there and, but not just go up there, but if we could actually, like, really go up there, like, in the movies, and really, like, do stuff, and be, and, and go to different worlds. So I don't know if you're you're aware of this, but um, so I started with my paintings. Sometimes happy accidents happen. I mean, Bob Ross was totally right when he was talking about happy accidents. I experience them a lot in almost every single painting. I have around five to ten happy accidents in every single one of my paintings, and so. Uh, so basically, I came up with this idea that I, I am, I don't know, well, I don't know if you'd say like the god of, but I am the owner of the planet Nog. And this is what the sky view, like if I were on my planet and I took a picture, this is what space looks like from the planet Nog. The word Nog means nice in Gaelic. So it's the planet nice. I'm gonna take a moment and dry this black. We're gonna go, and then once I do that, I'm gonna go back in with, well, once I dry it, there's two things we can do. We can go in with the turquoise, and that'd be cool, and then layer with the purple, and therefore the sky would then have more of a purple glow. But if we go in with the purple first, and then we follow through with the turquoise at the end, we're gonna get more of a turquoise look. Now, I really totally wanna to show you how to do one of these Roar Borealises. They're totally awesome and cool. And I feel as though if I do turquoise, this is also turquoise, and you can do yellows. I mean, I have never purpose, I personally witnessed the Roar Borealis. I, the, the highest north I went was Niagara Falls, and we did not see it. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, we had to go way more farther. So from what I've seen from images and videos, turquoise tends to be the greens, the bright green and the yellow seems to be what I, I have seen some orange, but you know what? This is your world. Just as this is the world of Nog and this is what, if we're going to go sightseeing in my planet, this is what we're going to see. So go ahead and pick your colors. If let's say you are totally into pink. Oh my goodness, this would just look gorgeous in pink. Uh, red, you could, and be like a thunderbolt, you know, like one of the, the, the Greek gods came down, and this is the, like, Zeus or someone, this is a little fireball. I mean, so there's so many different things, and there are a lot of different ways to do this. This is just one example technique on how to do them. Um... I recommend that you stick with one little pa basic concept idea per painting. So if you want to try the other techniques that I can show you as well, I would recommend starting a new painting just so that way you stay within the story and the concept and the ideas and it looks together like a cohesive unit. I mean, you could do many different kinds, but they kind of will stick out like sore, sore thumbs. Um, so, and also with this painting, there are a lot of blues in here, which we could totally do that in here. Like right now, since we have the black, 
What, what this is telling me is that it's more nighttime, super night, because we have all the black. If we were to add in a little blue, to me, what this would suggest would be that, like in this painting, it's a little bit, um, the moon is out. There's a really light, there's a maybe a, a light, there's some sort of light source here that is lighting up the sky a little bit, and that's why we'd have the blue. So to this one, I'm going to be a little different and just go and be like, it's night. It is super night and the moon isn't there. there we're in the middle of nowhere. There's no light sources. So we're, I'm just going to stick with the, um, the black. Okay, so that probably, yep, nope, oh, nope. I got a little bit of wet there. I'm going to take a few seconds and just go ahead and dry it all the way. I recommend you do the same thing. liking that. So since I want to have more purple in my sky, I'm going to go ahead with some more, more turquoise. I got a little purple here in the end, so I'm just going to wipe that off. If you notice my table, I recommend doing this. Like when I was in school, uh, this is a plastic table. I threw it out at Sam's Club. And it's some paper and I paint all over it and I paint a lot. So I changed this um, about two weeks ago, and so this is how much I paint. I do like two to three a night. But anyways, what I'm saying is, I feel that when you're doing the sponge technique, it just works so much better on a table versus like trying to do on an easel. When I was at the university studying, we, um, we usually use draft tables. The only time that we ever really used easels was, um, we had, uh, sorry, lost my turquoise. Ugh. Okay, but, but anyways, the last, the, when we did use easels, it was more when we were doing classes that were like live. So we had like a person or an object in which we were working on for dimension and the easel really helped us to be able to look over and then look back and it was a good angle to look back and forth to the painting. But other than those classes, I pretty much used drafting tables my entire way through the university. And because that's how I was trained, to me, tables just feel like, I feel more confident when I'm painting on a table versus an easel. I find that my paintings on easels suck. Like if I'm not going and looking at something that's live, like a person or anything, and I'm just painting, like if I was gonna paint this on an easel, I feel like my my space, uh, oh, uh, yeah, I don't think it would come out that good. So as I do have my easels, but like I don't, I don't use them that often. Um, so it's pretty much, yeah, pretty much. It's getting there. This is my favorite time of the day. I am so happy that I get to hang out with you right now. I've had quite the stressful day and. Yeah, thank you so much for just being with me and decompressing and I like painting with somebody. It's just so much nicer to not paint alone, isn't it? Sometimes I feel like the reason why I started my art studio was I was painting and oftentimes I felt like I was in my dungeon. Like it was, it wasn't dark, I had good lights, but it was a bedroom in my house and I just, I hated it. So. Yeah, opening up the art studio, it's so much nicer to have a buddy to paint with. And thank you so much for painting with me. Okay, this is coming good. I like it. It's great. I'm going to give her a few seconds to dry just a little bit. Then I'm going to do my final coat.
Hey, that's lovely. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to my purple sponge and then turn it around. Remember, when we do this, we don't want these edges because then it's going to start showing up as lines, which could totally be cool and look very pixelated, like that Minecraft look. If you did have, like, if I was, if I had like this as a smaller area and I was going like this, then you would see the triangle, the half rounded triangle, and that could, that could totally be a style. Um, I find though that when going with realism versus, um, well, pretty much every other style of art, it's better to just go with the rounded sponge. Okay, remember, I want to stick to my idea over here. I kind of laid that paint on pretty thick. Remember, don't wipe. No wiping, just doot doots, okay? A lot of doot doots. No wiping. Oh, it's lovely. It's happening. Oh, it's not really happening. I mean, it kind of is happening. I want to just, ah, but I can't because if I do, then it's just gonna, it's gonna go all over the place, which I guess it could. Okay, you know what? We're gonna be brave. We're gonna do it. Ah! Okay. Ah! <laughs> it is happening. Oh, I'm having a good time. Okay, so let's try to get some over here. I would, I do kind of want down here to be a little lighter because I'm probably going to put some trees or mountains or whatever. We're going to, we'll see, we'll feel it out and see how we feel. But I kind of do want to leave it a little bit lighter at the bottom. Just so that way when I do the trees and the mountains, they'll like kind of stand out a little bit. Now, what I'm not enjoying here is the fact that I do have a lot of white and I would really like to not have so much white. I really want to close that gap up so I don't have too much because we're going to do the stars. And when we have the background super dark and then we go to do some stars, the stars are, I need more paint. The stars will be like that much way better when it has the dark background as contrast. Just a little bit, not a lot. Remember, magenta is the more expensive of the paints. Also, have you noticed that as I need paint, I'm taking it out? The reason why I don't take out all my paints at the beginning of the painting is because this is acrylic and these paints are heavy body paints, which means there's a lot of pigment and there's less uh, water and less things to dilute the paint and so I like my paint to be really thick unless I'm painting flowers and people. Then I like to have really thin paint that is that stays wet for a long time so I can blend a whole bunch. Um, but because it's thick body it dries really quick. It gives me like a good workable 15 minutes so, and then it gets to start getting tacky. And sometimes painting with tacky paint can be a good thing. There are some moments in time where it actually kind of makes sense a little bit. But for the most part, nah. I think I'm just going to have to add more. Just more and more. Yep, more and more until we just get a good look. I could go back and add some black, which I think maybe, maybe we might do that. No, let's not do that. Let's add a little bit more turquoise and uh, let's try to see if we can get that Aurora Borealis continuing. I'm gonna give it a minute to dry, I keep forgetting. Let it dry.
I feel that it's a tiny bit tacky, so it's not all the way dry yet. Um, let's see. I'm gonna go around. Remember to keep your sponge nice and round so you don't get those edges. I'm gonna go in here. Okay, now I'm gonna really. There we go. Spot it up. Spots. That's what I'm going for. I'm starting to get the look. Starting to get what I had in my brain out onto the canvas. Just took a minute. Remember how I told you earlier? Give yourself some space. It's going to take a minute. It's finally, it's happening. It's okay to have a little bit of color on both sides. Like a little bit is fine, perfect, that's what we want. We want a little bit of color, a little bit of stuff going on. Okay, I'm going to make an executive decision. And I told you not to blend, but I'm just a little bit just like the littlest amount just to kind of yep there we go there because i do want i really want to do that aurora borealis in the turquoise i feel like it'll stand out pretty good there now I want to show you actually this painting I did over here with the purples. I did add on this one, I added some light, lighter purple. So I have the black, the magenta, I added white to the magenta to get that lighter color, which you could do to this. I don't know if I'm feeling it. We could try just a little bit. Let's, let's experiment. But I'm just a little, little experimenting, okay? It's just the less is more deal. So I'm going to go ahead, put it white in with the, that should be plenty. I don't want a lot. A little bit of white. And then a tiny bit, which magenta is already there. I have enough. I'm going to go in here and tap into the white and tap into the magenta and just tap, 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 tap. Blend, blend, blend. Got a really light look, and boop, 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 ooh, yes! There we go, where have you been? Look at all those little galaxies. Yes! Let's start tapping in. Yippers. Let me make sure you get the sides. I'm gonna give just a one or two or over here just to kinda, oh, okay, you know. There's fine where there's some white, where there's some brown, black here. Ha, 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 ha. Plenty. Yes. Ooh, just love that. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. Lighten that up. Let's do a little bit more. And really, you can, I find myself sometimes just continuing, continuing, and then I get to a point where I'm like, oh, I should have stopped like 10 minutes ago. That still happens to me all this time. I've been painting for many, many years, and I still have those whoops. Remember earlier how I said I have like 5 to 10 happy accidents per painting? Yeah. Okay. I think this is good. A little paint came off. I'm going to go with some... I got some paint kind of trying to come off, so I'm just going to feel like I'm going to mess it up just a little bit. There we go. Let's see if we can. Yes, there we go. I hit it. Yeah. Uh, yep. First. Okay. Done. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the awesome, really cool stars. I'm going to show you how to do that. There's many different methods. I'm going to show you the easiest ones that work the coolest. But before I do that, I'm going to want to have the background as dry as I possibly can get it. So that way that the there's no blending on the canvas. So at this stage, when you were happy with what you see and you're really liking what you got going on there, let it be. Which, you know what, now that I turned it around, new, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more black on these sides. I feel like they might be just too much. 
Really want to get that Aurora Borealis standing out pretty good here through the, the Milky Way. I know that I do need it a little lighter, which you know what, before I do the stars, maybe that would be a good idea. See, I keep changing my mind every like five seconds on this piece. It doesn't usually happen to that extent. I'm gonna make sure that the sides are matching the front of what I see. If this area is really dark, I wanna make sure it's really dark here on the side so I have continuity that wraps around the canvas. Oh, it's good, it's working. I'm gonna need to let that dry just a little bit. and give a little bit of glow so that way whatever I choose to put here I have a little bit of um, a little bit of a glow almost as if in the far distance really far away there is maybe a glow of a city you can go ahead take a clean sponge which I could rotate when it now no okay this works I'm gonna be very sparing here, okay? I'm just gonna light it up just a little bit. I'm gonna go in with some white and take out a lot. I'm gonna add paint to my, my sponge, but not a lot, like I don't want a lot. And right here, all I'm doing is adding a little bit, oops, I feel like I wiped a little bit there. Don't wipe, just dab. Gonna go ahead and got a little bit of a haze going on. There we go. Gonna go ahead and do the sides so they match. So it's good to have when you overlap in a painting I've noticed that they just seem way cooler there's more going on there's more depth the more overlapping the better I do still have some color from behind okay we're, we're gonna leave that that's good sometimes I feel that I can overdo things so now hmm I've got this I'm gonna, you know what, I am gonna overdo it for a quick moment or two. Let me give myself maybe, not some turquoise, some magenta so I can soften up right there. So I'm just gonna see if I can Work that in a little bit. working. I've got like almost a blend, sort of. Yep. Beautiful. Okay, so now, right before I do the stars, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that this is as dry as I can get it.
be pretty good for the moment. I'm going to turn my canvas upside down so that when I have my stars, they're going to appear to be shooting down. So like they're coming, this is the planet of Nog. So I want to have shooting stars coming down, little asteroids and whatnot, some comets, lots of fun little activities happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some white onto my palette. Just a little bit. Always remember to close your 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 paint stuff so that way it doesn't dry out in the in your thing. Okay, so I want little tiny stars because I want this to look like it's far off in the distance. So I'm gonna go ahead. I have this messed up brush that is just here right here. See if we can see. Yeah, it's a little tiny round brush that I've used a million times. And so the bristles are kind of all messed up and icky. This is going to be my preferred brush of choice. I'm going to go ahead with some fresh clean water and I'm going to add some drops, some drops to my paint to make it more liquid. I do feel like I added way too much paint. I don't need this much. So I'm adding just a little bit. I'm going to mix it in. It's really watery, really loosening up the paint. Now, the first flicks that I do, my stars will get bigger. The more flicks I do after the first one, they start getting smaller and smaller, the stars. I'm gonna take my brush, do my finger like this, and have at it. And flick, flick, lots of flickies. Gonna go around the side. Now they're gonna get smaller and smaller. Gonna go ahead and because I want this to be awesomer, I'm gonna go here, get some more paint. See if I can get some more flicks. Trying to get bigger flicks in areas in which I didn't get bigger flicks in. I'm just gonna work it. I'm going to go to town on this guy. This is going to be extra special. It's going to be a lot going on here. There are a lot of stars that you can see from the planet Nog because the atmosphere is um, very unpolluted and we can see really well. Of course, I guess that would mean there's not as much water in the air. Okay, so here's what we got. Yes, I'm liking it. Now, some of these big dots, I can make stories, and I can say it's a spaceship. They're spaceships, they're really big dots. Sometimes, like these little guys, they've got this one right here, it's got a little line after it. Those ones are comets. Now I'm gonna show you another technique of stars, which we can, which will be, I'm gonna, Try this guy. I'm going to put it in here. And then with this brush here, I'm going to tap. See? The problem with doing that method is we get this. This little dot here, it just looked like a paint splatter. I don't really got direction with it. Like it's not, it's just a big round spot. Whereas in like you can see this over here is very long. And I prefer to have the long ones that with the flicking method goes longer than with the tap method. Those, those ones end up being more round, which is cool for stars, but I wanted to show movement. Like there's a lot going on. So before I do anything, I wanna go ahead and make sure that I completely dry this all the way.
be about good. Okay, so now that I'm gonna take a moment and look at my canvas. So if there's any spots like this guy's a little too big, I could turn that into a moon. I could have more than one moon. I could add little lines to some of these to make them appear more like a comet. Uh, there's so many different choices and options that we can go from here. So what I recommend you do is look at your painting and see what areas are working for you and what's not. For example, this corner right here, I'm loving it. I just think everything about that corner is awesome. I am liking this area. This has a line. I don't, I don't, I'm not liking this line. So I could go back with some white there and touch it up, which I think I'm going to quickly do that because I really don't like it. A little bit. I don't need a lot, just a little. And I could just, there. There we go, try to break it up. And of course you gotta add some over here so it's continuity. Okay, there we go. So look at your painting, look at what you like, what you don't like. Now I, myself, have never seen the Aurora Boreal Alice in life. Um, I've seen a lot of videos and photos and you know, I really you know, did study a lot, but it's not the same as being there. So I'm gonna do my best representation what I am assuming that they look like. I'm going to go ahead, I wash my brush and to take my paper towel and wipe it off. I never push the brush into the paper doll. Never push it. Always pull and as you pull, turn. So turn and pull at the same time and the towel will, just as it did right here, it wicked the water and see, nice pretty point. Okay, so I feel as though in a way there are moments where it curves and then there are also other moments where it's like snaky, like it's kind of slithering a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to take this turquoise color that I have and I don't, I originally had intended to put it here, but I'm really loving this. I love what I'm seeing here. So I'm going to go ahead and do it meow-ish in the middle. We're just going to be like, hmm, yeah, because we got the Milky Way kind of going this way. So if I do it, it would be like that and it would almost be like an X. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and take my brush. Notice how when I load it, I'm only loading the bottom part, just half of the bristles. I don't want to load all of the bristles, just like half, just a little bit. Now, if you're going to press down, you make it very big and thick. If you just are really light with the brush, the line is a lot skinnier if you hardly press. But if you press, you get that. I don't want that. I want a nice, pretty skinny line, the skinniest line I can make it, which really I should probably use a liner brush for. But anyways, if you have a liner brush, use a liner brush. Um, okay, so I'm going to start... Mia. I'm gonna go like Mia. I'm gonna go around here. Oh, oh, too much. I can wipe it off and erase because I'm wiping because the paint underneath is dry. So because of that, it let, it's almost like erasing and going back a step. I didn't like that one. So I'm gonna come and do it again. So I'm kind of making like a Z. I'm making a big Z. And then the Z is gonna go out. And I know that I really like this sky, but it's okay to have a little bit of stuff going. It's fine. So then I'm gonna go really quickly and I'm going to take a fan brush. Now you don't have to use a fan brush for this, but I have found that it works very well to use one. Now I want to have it where it's not pretty lines. So I'm going to get it wet and wipe out some of the moisture. And do you see how it's kind of, now it looks like the brush isn't as pretty anymore. And it's got little lines, like little strands, many different groupings of strands. That's what I'm going for with this brush. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead. And they're going to be skinny here. The further we go out, the smaller they're going to go. 
So I'm gonna lift up and I'm just gonna work it. Oh, I need more paint. So I'm gonna have to, I need to kind of glob it on just a little bit. So that way I have some wet paint to work with. The first line I did was kind of just to give me a basic idea of where I was going. Now with the liner brush, I'm gonna go up. Ooh, and I'm gonna work it. Now these little guys, since they're really far away, are gonna be tiny. And then as I go to the top of this line, they're gonna get a little bit longer. But each time, these little guys are gonna be, they're gonna be going vertical, straight vertical. Yep. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of water. I'm gonna put some water into this paint to help thin it out just a little bit. I feel like it's a little too thick for my needs right now. There. I recommend that you work back and forth so that way your paint will stay wet and fluid when you need it. And then just keep working on it, adding layers. doesn't matter which way that this bends, it's always these little lines want to go straight up to the top of the painting. Now the reason why all my bristles are this are it's covered with paint the whole way is because I've been globbing in some water and mixing it around. But really, when I load the paint, the paint's really just on the bottom end. And yes, this part needs to go too. Need a lot more water. Well, fluid paint. Okay, just load on the tip. Okay, now these guys up here will get a little bit bigger. I always like to make them kind of small and then add as I go. I uh, make bigger. It's always easier to make things fatter and bigger versus to make things a little bit skinnier. It tends to be a little bit harder to do that. Because the once you cover up the background, if I really want to go back and, and go back and really do everything really well, that's a lot of work I have to go back and do to get the background looking just right so I can do it again. But if I start small and then I just keep adding like I'm adding layers, then eventually I get the thickness I want and I get the design and the look. So just be patient with yourself and let it happen. Let it be what it is. So far so good. I'm really liking what I got here. Now I'm choosing to stay within the same color. Um, I have seen video where they do change color. But I'm assuming this is your first time painting the Aurora Borealis, so I'm making it simple and easy. So it's as simple and easy on myself. Okay, so now I've got a basic idea. I'm going to go ahead, now that i got my kind of layout of what I'm doing, Wash my brush, set it aside. Now, I'm going to do this. It's going to go a little bit faster. I'm going to go ahead and just wipe a little bit of paint on there. Remember, you want your brush to not look pretty. You want it to look like there's many different groupings of groups here. Lots of groupings. 
And I'm gonna go and pull up. I'm gonna add some water in here. Let it loosen up that paint. Okay, this is what you don't want. Even though, yeah, I mixed it, this is too much. I'm going to wipe it off. It's too much paint. It's too much, yep. I want my, my brush to be very, like, sad, kind of. Like, it looks like it's an ugly old brush. So I dried it. I wiped it off. And I'm kind of separating these guys so they don't all clump and stick together. Yeah, that's looking good right there. Lots of different little things going on. So that way I get lots of little lines. That's what I'm trying to achieve here. Lots of little, little different lines. These are little guys. I'll work over here. Let them get bigger as it goes up. Wash off my brush. Then I'm going to wipe it. Remember, you don't push. You only pull and you wipe it across your paper towel. Waking out the moisture. Yep. Ooh, look at how many separations I got. That's a lot of good separations. It's easier to make those separations when your brush is dry. Now go in here. Now I'm not going to swoosh it around. I'm just going to try to apply. I'm dabbing in here to try to see if I can keep those separations. Maybe dab some off. I think I loaded a little too much. Yep, right there. So I see that I have paint, but yet they're all individuals. I'm going to go over here and swoosh upwards. Swooshy, swoosh, swoosh. Sometimes it's a good idea to turn the brush. I'm going to do this little side guy. Okay, so now I just need to make these guys a little bit longer. So my brush is still good because it's separated. I'm going to go in here and just apply some paint. Not a lot, because I do want to keep them separated. If I have to, I can go over here and wipe some out. It's almost like dry brushing, pretty much. It's, it's like a step before dry brushing. Okay, so now these guys need to be bigger. So we're going to do some more. I'm liking it. Now making these ones bigger, what it's going to do is give the eye a look that these parts are closer to you, this area. Okay, I'm going to go here and just cake on some paint just because it's starting to wipe away. And I just want to give it a little coating down here to really hide the background. Because some parts it's okay for it to be see-through, but it was just too much see-through for me. So far, I like it. I turn my brush side, instead of going up this way, I turn my brush sideways and now I'm going straight up like this to try to get some little individual little guys protruding and sticking out. And do you see how it's making individual little looking marks? That's what I want. Little 
little guys to be individuals. Whew, beautiful. Got extra little protrusions. Take your time and enjoy what you're doing. Relax, let it happen. However long it takes you to do this, that is a good speed and a good time. Going down here, but I'm being, I'm, I'm adding these little lines, but I'm only using the corner of my brush. I'm not using the whole brush. I'm being very sparse because I already kind of have lines going on. There we go. I think that's good. I'm liking it. I love what I see. Yes, I am super happy with that Aurora. Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and dry this. Now while I'm drying it, I'm going to be looking at my painting and seeing, hmm, what else could I do? I'm not done. I'm still going to do the bottom, but I wonder if there's something else in space. I could make a moon or something. Just going to check it out and take a moment. I strongly recommend at this point to completely dry your painting. that I really like this, I like a lot of places. Um, I was thinking it would be fun to add a moon right here. We could, I'm not really happy with that, but if I add a moon here, it would almost be like saying in the planet of dog, there are two moons. One is more prominent and then the other one is not so prominent. So that's really what that could look like. So I'm gonna go ahead and make some moons. Now, making a moon is totally awesome. I have a couple here that we can reference that I've painted. Here is one style of moon that we can see right there. It's a little tiny. There we go. See, it's just very basic and not a whole lot going on. Now, I got this one. This one is a much harder moon. 
You can see that I have a white circle, a glow around it, and then I've got like a sphere as if the sun were over here shining down onto it, and that's the light source, and it's a little shadowy over here. So uh, let's do kind of a little bit of both ideas. I am going to go ahead, and I have the white. I'm going to take my big, huge, round brush, uh, and we're not going to use this end. We're going to use this end, which is going to make it totally cool. And I'm going to dip the end. I recommend you just use a big brush, whichever brush you do use. Um, the reason why is because, I mean, look, this is much better. There's just more going on with the big brush than the little brush. So find a spot, which I'll find a spot me off. And I'm going to just dab it in, and I do kind of want to make the moon a little big so we have something to work with. And I'm going to dab it. Just make it a little, I want this moon to be a little bit bigger than that guy. So I kind of want my moon to be my biggest dot on the canvas. Now I'm working it and I'm, per remember, I have that book under here, okay? So I'm not pressing hard on the canvas at all. Just kind of letting this circle kind of form. I'm gonna stand up for a minute. I notice it's protruding on the top right area. So I kind of want to see if we can round it out a little bit. Just try to get it round as you can. Now, if it's got little crevices on the outside edges, that's perfect because that's like craters. Now, I have done this a million times making moons, and I feel that when the paint is tacky and dry, then you add more layers at that time because I find that you get less blending, and I just feel that the finished product looks way better. The moon that I painted... On this one that's what I did I allowed the white to dry and then I went back in and yes there is some blending occurring but not a whole lot so I'm gonna go ahead with my dryer and I'm going to dry the moon
right, so it's not all the way dry. It's a little bit dry, but it's pretty dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a smaller one of my brushes that is a little bit skinnier here. And I'm gonna go in the black, dab it into the black, and then I just have a little bit of black here. And then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna think, where is the sun? I don't know, it just seems to work for me that the sun is usually in my paintings tends to always be here, which it doesn't have to be, it really doesn't. But this is kind of a light source, a little bit. So, but I mean, the moon is gonna be far, far away, right? But it still is kind of a little bit of a light source. So because of that, I'm gonna say this is here and the sun is like, the sun is like meow. And so that's gonna be the light area. So I'm gonna go ahead with my black and go in the bottom and I got black tappy tap taps tapped in some black I'm gonna go ahead and take a moment and dry it again And the white should be a tad bit on the tacky ta uh, tacky side with a little pretty that's dry it's much easier to do with thick body paints I'm gonna go back in here and kind of tap away a little bit a little bit of mixing's happening I can go into the light area just a little bit to try to get that look just a little bit but I do want to keep it a little bit lighter up there which I'm pulling down some of the white down in Good, I like it. I'm going to add a tiny bit more black, just a little bit, and go doot, 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 little doots, and try to be in this area, in the bottom left corner. It's good, I like it. So I'm gonna go wipe my brush off, and I'm gonna go back into some white. I don't need to use gray for this because it's kind of mixing a little bit on the palette. Now I'm going to start where my the white area should be on the sphere. And I'm going to kind of work some white down into the black area, which is going to kind of turn it a little bit gray when it mixes. Yeah, it's working. And I'm going to go back to the black one more time just for a little quick touch up. Now you can go back and forth as many times as you feel you're ready with and you're happy with and and just let it happen. Once you get your moon to where you like it, keeping in mind that where the shadows of the moon would be, it's a little bit darker there and where the highlights, where the light is bouncing off of the moon, you do want it to be a little bit lighter there. I do like to leave the white edge around it because it's almost like a little bit of a glow. But I want to break up that white edge so it looks really cratery. Like this moon has gotten beat up so much. I like it. Like it, like it, like it. I'm going to go back in with some white and touch this area up a little bit. Because even in the white area, I still want it to look cratery with some grays. So that's it. I'm liking that moon. It kind of does blend into the background. Now, the only reason why it's, it's like an optical illusion right now is because we added a whole lot of stars. Had we have not added a whole lot of stars and had a really light background, then this moon would be like over here with these stars. Do you see how these stars are really standing out a whole bunch? That's what the moon would look like. But it is really light, but it's fine. It's, it's subtle. It works. It really makes sense. I'm really happy with the moon. So I've put in a lot of thought 
about do I want trees or mountains? And I think this time I want to say the planet Anog. There's a city. It's far away. We can see the glow of the city, but yet we're camping. So it's mount. I'm going to do mountains. And we can do some trees. I mean, it really is how far do we want our, our mountains to be away from us. And if they don't work out after you do mountains, you can turn them into trees. It's super easy. I'm going to go ahead and use my palette knife. Now you can go ahead and use whatever palette knife you want. This is my preferred style, my preferred shape of palette knife. I feel like I have the most versatility. I like the sharp point. The sharp point for me just seems to be very user friendly. So I'm going to need to add a little bit of black onto my palette. Okay. And I'm going to use my point and I'm going to make points. I'm going to make them really jagged. So I'm going to scrape just a little bit. See, I didn't put a whole lot onto my palette or on my to, onto my pet uh, knife. So we'll do one here. And right now I'm just doing the layout of the mountains. I'm going to make some bigger, some of them shorter, some of them wider than others. They're going to have their own little basic layout. I'm going to keep them very pointy. I personally right now I'm in the Tetons and they're uh, younger mountains so they're a lot more pointier. So just to reflect that. Um, I feel when you do them, when you do point, oh I can make a little valley right here. We'll make the, we'll say that there's a valley between these two mountains. I find that when you do pointy ones versus rounded mountains, they just read a lot easier for the eye. We're going to do a really big one. Really vary these guys up. Oh, that goes a little bit bigger. Yeah, that one got a ridge on it. And then we'll do a little one. Right here, a little guy. So I really buried them up. So now that I have a basic outline, I'm going to go ahead and feel, fill these in. I'm going to be a little rough with my knife and not putting a lot of energy and effort, just kind of moving it around and adding paint and scraping off paint at the same time. Trying to keep my mountains pointy because that's what I want for my mountains. I'm not liking this, so I'm going to touch it up. But first, I'm going to do... Get all this. I'm going to go ahead and try to do the sides as well just so I can have continuity. I'm going to make like there's another mountain coming here. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side so I don't forget. It's ha it happened to me once where I forgot to paint a mountain on the other side. And then I'm going to paint this as well. Now you can come back with a brush and do this with a brush if you don't have a palette knife. But I already got it. It's in my hand. It's working. Now it is really dark. So because it's dark, I'm not going to see a lot of what's going on with these mountains. If it was like I had a blue sky, then I would want to add some browns and grays because there would be like the moons out and I could possibly see. It's like a more of a the sunset but yet I can still kind of see a little bit in the sky look and so therefore I would see more of the mountains but because I didn't add that blue I'm just gonna go ahead and be with my black because it's like I don't see them but I see them but it's my eyesight is not like a wolf or anything I'm not can't see that well so they appear to be black to me I have heard it said where uh, people say black is not a color but I find that when I incorporate black into a painting, especially where it would kind of make sense when it comes to shadows, it just works. So therefore, I personally think, yes, black is a color. It's one of the tools that I use to paint my paintings. So it's a tool, and it's a very helpful tool because almost every single one of my, my paintings that I paint typically have black somewhere in there. Like, you know, if you're doing a, a kitten 
I like to put a little bit of black in the eye. Pretty much I always do the pupils in black. Almost always. On everything. Okay. So, loving these ones. Now, I'm choosing not to be zigzaggy the whole way. I do want to have some different looks. But I'm not liking this one. So, I'm going to make it a little bit fatter. Could give her a second little point there. There we go. Yeah, I like that. That works. Extra little, yep. Get burrs. I'm happy with that. And cover up some of the white spaces. Yeah, I like it. So what I'm gonna do is wipe off my palette. I like to clean my palettes as I'm using them. Um, I mean, this little guy with plastic, he was a cheapy little thing, but yeah, I just, I, I've been keep cleaning my brushes all this, this whole time throughout this whole class. So I recommend you do the same just to keep, keep up with it. Um, okay. So, whew, I think, I think I might be done. One of the things I'm having issues with that I've been stressing that like, should I do this? Should I not do it? Is this. I'm feeling as though I have seen photographs where the light comes and then it just, it, it starts the Borealis. I have seen that, but usually it'll come to a point again in the photographs that I've seen that it's point and point. So it goes better and then point again. So also there is the theory that you want to keep the eye moving around the space in the painting lots of fun stuff to look at so i'm thinking if i let this run off the corner it's visually stimulating and that it moves the eye and it appears that i'm more inside of this versus looking outside of a window i'm like it'll make me feel as though i'm underneath of the aurora borealis it's going up and over Versus just looking straight at it. So, especially with this type of shape of mountains. So I'm going to take a quick second. And I'm going to go ahead and extend that. Extend the, the Aurora. I'm going to add my little line. Try to stay true to where I'm going. There we go. Um, I don't think I'm going to worry about this edge too much. I think I'll just let it be. So, got my fan brush. I dry washed it, dried it. Now I'm going to separate my little pieces. I'm going to go back into here, which all the water has dried. And I'm going to add my lines. Woo, that looks beautiful. And take a couple strokes, but eventually, ooh, really nice. Yes, that was a fast one. I'm going to do a little bit more down here. Remember, it got kind of see-through. I want to try to break up that line a little bit that I made. I made it, you know, remember that when I did a big line? Oh, no, 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 no. Got into the black there. I'm gonna hurry up and wipe that off. Okay. So I'm just gonna have to cover up where I wiped into the turquoise. Okay. Now, that is working for me. I'm totally cool with that. So I'm gonna let it be. Now we could add some grays into the mountain if we wanted to that we could see some things, but I think I'm just gonna let it go straight black. Now, at this point, if you hate your mountains, um, I'm not gonna do it, but I'll show you what to do. You can go with your fan brush, or you can go with, with, um, with a square brush, a rectangular brush. 
you would put your brush sideways and you would dip, you would dab it in the black and then you would just do 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 and go up and down up and down and make little lines and you would make them vary exactly what i did here at the very end when i had extra little lines coming up on their own that's what you would do here you would just tree here's a tree here's a tree here's a tree here's a tree and you would just do them in black now when you do add the trees and you add them little then they're far when you're there this method when you're just going and making little straight up and down lines kind of you don't really want it lines you want to more just dab but dab in a way you're having a line happen now when you do it like that the trees will appear to be really far away and that can be cool and obviously you would still want to have your trees somehow kind of connecting so all down here would still where you put your mountains it still would be black now with these trees right here, what I did to paint these ones was I used a fan brush and sorry, I'm getting paint everywhere. Okay, so I used the fan brush. I made a little bit of a line that went straight down. I, you know, a vertical line so I knew where my trees were going. I varied the heights of those lines. Then I went back with the fan brush and went do, 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 and just worked it. All the bottom ones first got it nice and fluffy and then I would only use half like this half over of my fan brush and I would make smaller little ones see how it's like tiny 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 and then as you go down the tree you can rock the brush a little bit over where you're using all of the brushes you get to the bottom and that's, that's pretty much that's a basic tree now these trees appear to be closer uh, doing this method versus just doing little tiny lines and then having them all connect they'll they look farther but um yeah so that's basically basically the idea let's see if we could possibly add a comet i do think that if you paint and you do your paintings where they are in the ideas of threes everything works out better so when you have images that are in prime numbers like right now i have one two and i possibly could have three but then i have these other ones that kind of balance out so having another one would be a good idea so so that way i can have a prime number on my canvas now i'm going to go ahead and get my liner brush i recommend you use a liner brush for this i'm going to try to make a comment so I'm going to look at my little balls and all the things I got going on. And now this is looking pretty good. This one might be a good comment. You could do with little ones like these ones are like little lines. Because remember how we flicked them when I had the paintbrush the other way and I flicked in this method. It really made the dots a little bit straighter. So I kind of like I already have some shooting stars going on. Uh think I would like one here you know what let's make him a comment now the problem though is one time I did paint one and it kind of looked like a little sperm and that was not cool but that's what it looked like like right here I got some dots it just happened this was a natural uh, movement of the paint itself a natural little way that the paint happened uh, let's see. I don't really have examples on these ones. That one that I made that was hideous, it was sad. I got rid of it. You can make some stars that look like these. These are fun little stars, which maybe instead of a comet, instead of doing that, what if we just made a really cool little north star going on? Um, I've got some. This one's a little bit better. So these are basically crosses that have little things in them and then if you want to so i remember when i used the really big brush this one and uh or when i was tapping i had the small brush and i was tapping when i was doing this method that's how a lot of these bigger spots started because of the tapping method versus the flicking method and so we can cover up a space on the painting that we don't like and make it all start. When you are thinking of prime numbers for your painting, I also like to think at the same time to triangles. Because if you have triangles in your design, 
the eye will continue to keep moving. This is moving the eye. That I, I feel like it's over here. This is the triangle I feel like I got going on here. So I would like to add something over here. Like this. This is pretty. I, we, could, we could do that. That almost makes them like they're in a line though if we do do that. We could do here. We could just make one right here. I mean, I don't want to have a straight line going, right? Decisions, decisions. How about we do a North Star with this guy? Or we make that one into a comet. Look, I already have two little dots next to each other. So we can make this one into a star. We can still make that one. We can make this one into a star. Like it's, you know, like a Jesus type star. Because it's so low. Um... There is this guy and this guy. So both of these could be spaceship, spaceships because they're very similar. I remember seeing um, uh, a black and white movie and the spaceships that they used. I don't remember the name of it. It was a really good one too. Um, but anyways, they, yeah. And there's a lot of orby like things. So it's a lot of space traffic. So... Do this like these ones are coming out or decisions decisions we can make our own how about we just do it right here hmm I don't know okay well anyways I gotta get my liner do I have my liner yes I have my liner so we're going to dip it into the paint and if you want to to feel more comfortable practice make a little line remember the more you push down see how big and thick that is i just want a little tiny line so i don't want to push hard on it at all i'm also going to load up my brush a lot and figure it out as i go uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, right here. I'm going to do a straight up and down line. Trying to be as parallel as I can with the side of the painting. And then I want to do a horizontal line. Now, I have found that these stars, like Disney type looking stars, tend to look like the Jesus cross a little bit more like with the longer tail at the bottom, I feel like it just, it reads cool. And then it's also, I'm a Christian, and it's also kind of sentimental, I guess, a little bit to, oh, look, there's a cross in it. Um, but I, Disney does these type of stars all the time, and I think it looks cool. So I went vertical, and I went parallel with the side of the canvas. Now I'm going to go horizontal. And this horizontal guy was not going to be as long as the vertical one. Okay. So then I think I'm going to need to make the top part just a little bit bigger. Okay. So now I'm going to do the sideways little ones, which I'm going to wipe off my brush and try to see if I can get a better point on here. A little better point. And then I'm going to do like a little X in the middle. Little tiny X. And that's it. There you go. Twinkly star. I like it. I'm going to fill up some of this body a little bit. Make sure that your vertical and your horizontal lines are a little bit bigger than your X lines in the middle. Yeah, I like it. That's good. And I think it's good to just leave it straight white. I think it works out. Now, remember what I said, too. We also sprayed a lot of stars in here. So it's not standing out a whole lot. It's just standing out a little bit. And so because of that little bit that it's standing out, it uh, it's not so much. It's kind of hidden. But I think it, it works. It makes sense. 
So I think I'm going to call this one done. I really like it. I hope you like your painting too. I hope yours came out super awesome. If you would like to share and to send me a call, let me see. Send me a picture of yours like on the email or social media. Like I'm all over social media. So just send me a post. I'd totally love to see your version of this painting and how you've done it. Um, thank you for painting with me and I will see you next time.